Like many of you, one of the things that I track about artificial intelligence progress is longevity escape velocity, or LEV. Now, if you're not familiar with this term, the idea basically is eventually we'll get to a point where medical science is advancing uh, such that our lifespan is increasing greater than one year per year, uh, one biological year per calendar year. That's probably the best way of putting it. So essentially, for every year that you're alive, medical science, with the help of artificial intelligence, will extend your lifespan by more than a year. The question is if or when that will happen. Now, to set the stage a little bit, I need to tell you that this is something that I do basically every time I get access to a new AI model, is I ask about when are we going to get escape uh, longevity escape velocity and what are we going to need to get there. So, of course, when GPT-5 Pro came out, this is one of the conversations I had. Now, I'm not going to bore you to death with this entire long conversation and all of the math, but I did break it down into some nice handy-dandy infographics with Gemini that we'll go over in just a second. But, long story short, one of the first primary milestones that we're going to see, or probably need, in order to hit longevity escape velocity is what I would call Alpha Cell. Now, uh, DeepMind has built Alpha Fold and Alpha Proteo, and they actually, this is the best news that I have read. Now, they're, they're kind of mum about it, and they're not actually calling it Alpha Cell. But Demis Sasabis has said that they are working on a high-fidelity virtual cell. Now, you might be wondering, why is this important? What, what is this actually bias? And I'll go over that in just a second. Uh, but they, are, they do have this underway. It is colloquially referred to as Alpha Cell. Everyone just assumes that it's going to be called Alpha Cell. And so this would be what would be called an in silico or, or cell on a chip. Uh, which allows you to test any kinds of therapies or medicines so that if you want to figure out will this rejuvenate a particular cell, uh, human cells, uh, with a particular genome, you'll have a way of testing it. Because if you can't rejuvenate uh, every single cell in the body, you're not really, you don't really have a chance at dramatically extending uh, life, life expectancy, especially if you want indefinite lifespan. So we don't really use the term immortality. We use indefinite lifespan, meaning that you don't have a natural cause of death uh, except for exogenous causes like accident or severe infections that you don't manage to control. Uh, however, so they are saying that hopefully they can do it within five years. Uh, this would be incredible, and the reason is because it allows you to dramatically accelerate the research. You combine AlphaFold, Alpha Proteo, and whatever else is going, uh, they're going to be working on as, as the intermediate steps to be able to, to design new therapies and test them very quickly in batches of you know, millions at a time. So, with that being said, I want to walk you through kind of the, uh, the, the infographics. So, these are the compressed versions of those very, very long conversations that I had. So, we're going to start with here, the alpha cell hypothesis. Why cell on a chip is the minimum viable product or the MVP for achieving longevity escape velocity. First and foremost, the analog wall. Developing new medicines, especially for aging, is slow, expensive, and fails over 90% of the time. The average drug takes 10 to 15 years to get from lab to patients. Uh, the average drug costs $2.5 billion. If we could lower that by a factor of 1,000 or a factor of a million per drug, that would be phenomenal. I mean, if you can, if you can lower that by a factor of a million, then you're looking at uh, $2,500 per drug, meaning if you got the, the money, you can pay for your own custom drugs at that point. And then finally, one size fits none. Treatments are designed uh, for an average person ignoring unique genetics, meaning that this is why you have, like, sometimes you have really horrific side effects with a lot of drugs is because you're going to have particular metabolic pathways that are or are not activated by those drugs. For instance, one class of drugs that I can't take is called a statin. I can't take statins because it puts me in crippling pain because of the way that my body processes them. Um, and that's just, that's just a side effect. And if you, if you have that side effect, you can't take that drug. So the goal then is to create the universal digital cell. So alpha cell would act as a faithful digital twin of a human cell. Now this is, this is important. It's not a molecule for molecule simulation. If we needed to do an atom by atom simulation, that is decades away, uh, just due to the complexity of a cell. However, 
a functional digital twin, meaning that you can uh, you can have a high fidelity uh, result. Say we add this this substance to the cell at this concentration. What does it do? So the universal cell on a chip uh, would allow us to test any medicine against any genome entirely in silico. So for all intents and purposes, a simulation, just not a like physics simulation. By simulating cellular biology with mechanistic precision, AlphaCell transformed drug discovery from a game of chance into a search problem. Uh, so then, the engine for longevity escape velocity. Here's why this actually results in longevity escape velocity. First, massive simulation. Test millions of potentials, uh, potential drugs of on trillions of virtual personalized cells. Rapid discovery. Identify promising interventions and predict the side effects in days and not years. And then finally, personalized medicine. Tailor the best interventions to an individual's unique biology before clinical trials. This is the MVP. So the pipeline would be test, discover, personalize, repeat for pretty much any disease uh, or aging in general. So this is probably one of the one of the biggest frontier problems. And this is actually what Demis Hassabis has said, uh, that this is like what they're building up to. Uh, so then... Let's see, the next one was the computational roadmap. So the question is, okay, if we want to train alpha cell, how much is that actually going to cost uh, in terms of compute? So we look at alpha fold two. Uh, it took 7.5 uh, times 10 to the 21st flops. ESM3, which is a frontier generative model that can design new proteins, took uh, about one times 10 to the 24 flops. So we're getting up there. So the goal, what is alpha cell? We kind of already talked about that. So then let's talk about the uh, estimated uh, kind of fa cellular foundation model. Now these are the numbers that were that that uh, GPT-5 Pro came up with, looking at uh, other multimodal models and everything that would need to go into it. Uh, so basically, these numbers are black box generation. As I said, I could take you through every all the logic and reasoning, but that would bore you to death. But let's just accept the face of it right now that alpha cell version one would take about five times 10 to the 24 to three times 10 to the 25 flops. So about 4,000 times the compute of alpha fold two. So this would be the first gen model and obviously they have alpha fold one, two, and three now. So that is evidence that these, these models do improve. So the, the kind of the GP22 moment, the, the initial launch of alpha cell could happen by around 2030. Uh, at that point, it's actually not the compute is the bottleneck. It is actually the architecture, knowing what to make, where to get the data, how to train it, and that sort of thing. Then alpha cell 2, um, or N plus 1, would probably take another few years just in terms of compute because then we're looking at about 2 times 10 to the 27 flops or a quarter million times the compute of alpha fold 2. So then you uh, you take that you say okay so we'll have the ability to you know simulate any body uh, any cell with any genome uh, by the mid 2030s hopefully so then longevity escape velocity could be happening by the late 2030s according to this. Now this would be disappointing to a lot of people, and what I will say is that you often, we, whenever, you, whenever we run these calculations, we often overestimate how long it's going to take. Uh, so you basically, whenever someone makes a forecast of AI is going to be able to do X by year Y, uh, you cut that in, a, in half or in a third or a quarter, uh, because that's what we're seeing the trends lately is, you know, uh, earlier this year when, uh, actually it was just a couple months or a couple weeks ago, when both OpenAI and Google uh, Gemini both beat uh, the, um, the Math Olympia, the IMO, and even people, insiders, earlier this year said that that was years away. Two or three years away minimum, it was months away. So when we say, oh, longevity escape velocity or having alpha cell is a decade or more away, it could be just two years away. Um, so then finally, the final pathway to alpha cell is just what is this actually going to, to do? What are the steps to get there? And then we'll end it today. So phase one, context aware uh, interactomes. So this was basically, let me tell you how I, how I generated this. The idea was what are the interstitial steps to get from alpha proteo and alpha fold to alpha cell? Um, so we need, basically we need the building blocks. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. 
Context aware interactomes go beyond static pairs to model many body complexes that change based on cell type and state. Proteostasis and PTM dynamics. And by the way, I don't even know what a lot of this is. <laughs> I'm just the messenger here. Uh, predict protein kinetics, synthesis, folding, modification, and degradation rates. Next is subcellular localization. Predict not just what proteins do, but where they are in the cell and how they get there. Uh, phase two, causal regulatory and metabolic models. Chromatin and, uh, and transcription, a causal world model mapping genome and epigenome to time-resolved transcription and splicing. RNA world and translation model RNA stability and localization to predict protein copy numbers from transcripts. Uh, next is signaling and metabolic flux. Couple phosphorylation, no, phosphorylation, cascades with genome scale metabolic models for dynamic flux prediction. The whole point here is that there's a lot of steps to actually build up to alpha cell. Phase three, uh, closing the loop, phenotype grounding, create a bridge from molecular state to observable cell morphology using high content imaging, uh, cell painting. Uh, then bench in the loop learning, use active learning, propose CRISPR edits or, or drugs, test in high throughput screens, and feed the results back to the model. So basically, uh, you need, to, you need the, the model to say, what if we change this gene and see if the model's prediction against that gene actually has the effect that it thinks that it's going to have, and that can be part of your loss function. Um, so who knows if that's actually going to be required. It very well might be because uh, reality is messy. And so then you put all of these together, and we have uh, alpha cell 1, or alpha cell 0, sometime between 2029 and 2032. And then as uh, the technology continues to improve, we have alpha cell uh, version 1 or 2, depending on how you're numbering them, uh, sometime between 2033 and 2036. Now again, uh, Demis Hassabis has said they're actively working on this, and they hope to have it done within five years. So cut those numbers in half, and there you have it. That's the path to longevity escape velocity. Uh, I find this to be particularly exciting. Again, DeepMind isn't actually working on something that they call alpha cell, but they say that they are working on high fidelity in silico virtual cells. So for all intents and purposes, that is alpha cell. Uh, and when they, if, if, well, for them, given their track record, I will say it's probably a question of when they succeed, not if they succeed. But then the, the, the result of when they do succeed is going to be a Cambrian explosion of medical science and medical technology. And also consider that by the time some of these are taking off, uh, as someone pointed out, by 2027, LLMs or multimodal models, because they're not really singular modal anymore, by 2027, LLMs are going to be doing month-long tasks autonomously. They're already able to do a couple hours of work autonomously. Month-long tasks is, that's a lot of work, particularly when you have above PhD level of intelligence. So all of those combined means that we're probably going to get compounding returns. We're going to get a snowball effect or a virtuous cycle where one type of AI helps another type of AI. And then, of course, there's more and more types of AI and hardware and everything else going on. So I would not be surprised if DeepMind announces AlphaCell within the next two or three years. Uh, and then, of course, it, in the next two or three years, uh, these, uh, you know, GPT-6 will be out or in Gemini 4 and Grok 8, probably with how fast they're releasing. And those models will be beyond any human researcher uh, for drug discovery and drug manufacture. So we're going to have these compounding returns, but I think AlphaCell is the, that's going to be the biggest milestone of getting to longevity escape velocity as, as a kind of narrow artificial intelligence. So we'll have the general purpose general intelligence, and then we'll have the artificial super intelligence that is more of a narrow kind of alpha cell. So with all that being said, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you're as excited about this as I am. Uh, yeah, cheers.